Well, you might be disappointed to see me come up since it says in the bulletin, Brian Barkman. It's not very far out though since I am his father. We had changed that on our ministerial meeting and has been probably missed to change that on a bulletin. But anyway, <clears throat> I am glad to be here today. I have had uh, some problem with my voice lately, so I, with your prayers, I believe, I trust we, it will work through this sermon. And I was just thinking maybe I should have been singing all the time I was sitting on the combine the last weeks. Maybe my, my voice would be not so, so rusty now. But, but anyway, we have been blessed. And uh, I uh, agree what, uh, what we heard already. I was also thinking of uh, the song that we, that Sam Benny mentioned, uh, the song that we sang that uh, suits very much to my thoughts that I had in the message today, that the holiness. <clears throat> so I uh, titled my message, Mystery of God. I think you know uh, more or less what, what that means when we, uh, when we read of mystery, what is uh, mentioned as, as mystery in the, in the New Testament. Uh, and I'll start uh, reading uh, out of Jude, verse 1, starting at verse 1. Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ and brother of James, to them that are sanctified by God the Father and preserved in Jesus Christ and called mercy unto you and peace and love be multiplied. So I trust that I am speaking to people who are, as it says here in, in verse 1, to them that are sanctified by God the Father and preserved in Jesus Christ. The sanctification, that, that's what I would like to stress today, the holiness. <clears throat> so what a blessing. And verse 3, Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. So this last part, it doesn't like, uh, sound like Battle Mennonite Church, does it? We wouldn't want to, to have that through in, in our congregation, what he writes here about people that, that come in unawares and and we have, uh, we have to be watchful because in verse 6 it says, Even angels kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation. He has reserved an everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. So that's, that's why we have to be, be watchful. Then we jump to verse 14. Behold, the Lord cometh with 10,000 of his saints to ex execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed and of all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. These are mur murmurers complainers walking after their own lust and their mouth speaketh great swelling words having man's persons and admiration because of advantage but beloved remember ye the words which were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ how that they told you there should be mockers in the last time you should walk after their own ungodly lusts. 
ungodly lusts. These be they who separate themselves, sensual, having not the spirit. So just uh, so far it does not sound very encouraging, does it? People that, that uh, may come in which are not, not wanted. But then uh, from verse 20 we have the encouraging part. But ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And of some have compassion making a difference. Are we making a difference? That's what, what made my desire is that we could make a difference wherever we are. And others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garments spotted by the flesh. I mean, that sounds to me like, uh, like uh, cleansing. It's, it's uh, t- taking off the dirt. You'll have some of that later on. But now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, to the only wise God and Savior be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. Amen. What, what is the mystery? It's more than we can fathom, just, just this part of uh, we take that to heart, who God is and what he is for us. Then uh, looking into Ephesians 5, verse 32, this is a great mystery, as Paul says, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. And that is still a mystery to me. How can the church be so special to Christ? How can he love the church so much? The more I think of it, the more I value to be a member of a local church. First of all, in the the church of of God overall, and then then in the, the local church to be a member of all the saints. So what is the mystery in Christ's church? Do all people who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ have to belong to a local church? Why is it not sufficient for everyone to be a Christian without belonging to a local church group? Just be a Christian wherever we are. There is a mystery in in working together with other saints. That is a mystery. If we look at that, working together. I cannot say only those that belong to a local church group are acceptable before God. Neither can I say all the members of a local church group are accepted before God. That is not, not my point. That does not belong to me to say that. that. That's God. He looks at the heart of each one. He knows exactly where we belong to, who is acceptable and, and who not. The question again, what is the mystery in Christ's church? Just a simple answer. <clears throat> A group of, of good people, a minister or two, a deacon, a song leader, a school and, and teacher, and some uh, in a building where, where to come together, some committees, and we would say that a church is established. Is that that simple? A group of, of good people, minister or one minister or two, and a deacon, song leader, school, and a teacher, some 
some committees and about the building and is that is that a real church, a local church? Uh, we find a better answer in <clears throat> Matthew 16, starting at uh, verse 13. Matthew 16, verse 13. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. And he said unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee, Thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the key of, keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whosoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then charged he his disciples that they should tell no man that he was Jesus the Christ. A mystery. Why did Jesus say this last part? Why should, should he not tell others? <clears throat> That's as a mystery to me. Here we see clearly that it takes what it takes to build a church. It takes a rock foundation. It's a very true confession. Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. <clears throat> Without this foundation, no local church group will survive. Jesus does not say he will build a church. He says he will build his church. What happens when Jesus builds his church? There is a temple being built. We heard already from, from the temple at, at uh, Solomon's time was built. And this is a different temple. There's, there's a temple built when we think of a church of Jesus Christ. The, the foundation is that is a, a building. And Christ builds his, his church and we are his helpers. We are helping Jesus Christ to build a church. Second, uh, First Corinthians three verse eleven. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. So that's that's the answer. We don't have to to look for, search for, the foundation. <coughs> foundation is already made. That is Jesus Christ. But what material does it take to build this temple? 2 Corinthians 6 verse 16 says, And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? So here already we see that that, that is something else. It is not, not idols. For ye are the temple of the living God. As God hath said, I will dwell in them and walk in them and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. A few thoughts that I, meant, that I notice here in this part is that, that a church, we find that somewhere that uh, a church is uh, that means to be called out, to be separate. 
to be separated from, from the world. And uh, did not touch the unclean thing that comes again to that song that we sang from holy. We, we need to, to be clean, to cleanse us from every unclean things. And I will receive you and will be a father unto you and ye shall be my sons and daughters, <coughs> saith the Lord Almighty. Then uh, First Peter chapter 2 verse 4, a few verses of First Peter 2 starting at verse 4. To him coming as unto a living stone, disallowed indeed of man, but chosen of God and precious ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ so what does it take to build a temple lively stones And it says, ye also, as, as lively stones, are built up a spiritual house and holy. Again, we notice here, holy, that means clean. Holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded, shall not be confused or perplexed. Unto you therefore which believe he is precious, but unto them which be disobedient, a stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner. And a stone of, of stumbling and a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed. So when we look at this portion here, we see that we cannot expect, with building this temple, we cannot expect always praises and acceptance from people beside a church that, that see us building. As verse 5 states, it, it takes lively stones to build this temple. That way we grow together in love, which makes a real strong building. Second Peter 3, verse 18, but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. Amen. So it says that we shall grow and we know that uh, just uh, when we look at, at human beings, we uh, don't expect people to grow much in, in, in height, especially in, in height after uh, that's different, let's say 20, 25 years. That's, that's that's about uh, when people are grown, they are, we, uh, sometimes the, the weight might change later on as, if we want it or not. But, but, uh, but here it sounds like we always have to grow, no matter how old we are. It's always we need to grow, grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be glory, both now and forever. And remember, in, the, in this building, nobody needs to be the, the cornerstone, because we read already that the cornerstone is there already. Jesus Christ is the foundation, and he is the cornerstone. As we know, when, uh, when building a house, the corners are very important. Foundation is very important and the, the corners are very, very important. They have to be strong, straight. 
and it says, as it says in uh, Isaiah 28, 16, Therefore thus say the Lord God, Behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation, a stone, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. He that believeth shall not make haste. Another said, uh, says not, will not act hastily. I remember very well when... Uh, when I was uh, in the school years, we built a new house in Belize, and I can still see that uh, how my my dad, how he he looked at the wood, and uh, he was choosing uh, the studs for the corner, and, and, and the corners there has has to be a, a straight. He looked along that that piece of wood, and, and uh, if that wasn't straight. It was not fit for the corner stud. It, it had to be a good, strong, and straight piece of wood to be to be put in the corner. So we see with uh, with this in Isaiah 28, we see that Jesus is the solid foundation and a precious cornerstone. He uses us to fill in the walls. So from one corner to the other to, to fill in the walls, that's where he uses us for, <laughs> with living stones. And that is a mystery, using living stones. How can that be? When you think of uh, when we think of uh, living stones growing into each other, we know it requires cleanliness. My picture is if, if the stones grow into each other, that, that makes a, a really strong wall. And we know if there, if there is uh, dirt between, they, they cannot grow into, into each other. In 2 Timothy 2, verse 19. 2 Timothy 2, verse 19. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this zeal. The Lord knoweth them that are his. And let every one that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Again, we see here the cleanliness, the holiness. Depart from iniquity. Verse 20, but in the great house there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. Notice that again, of uh, the purge himself, that means he cleanses himself. He shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified, clean, and washed, clean, holy to meet for the master's use and prepared unto every good work. And Romans 11 verse 23, and they also, if they abide not still in unbelief, shall be grafted in, for God is able to graft them in again. For if thou wert cut out of the olive tree, which is wild by nature, and work grafted contrary to nature into a good olive tree, how much more shall these, which be the natural branches, be grafted into their own olive trees? For those that know what, what the, the process of grafting, know that that requires cleanliness. I'm not sure, not very familiar how trees farmer grow trees, but 
I know that when we want to graft a branch from one tree to another, we have to be very careful not to let any dirt come into the grafting process. I know that from, from experience when I was, uh, was a young boy and, and I tried that different ways and uh, just in the wild uh, bushes from one tree, cut a piece from one tree and, and uh, graft that into an, another and roll some, some tape around it. And uh, I had, I had the luck with some, but not, I found out that not, not every variety would accept the other variety branch, but uh, I had some luck with, with that, but I already realized that if there is dirt among, that will not, not grow together. The, uh, the tree does not accept another branch of that that is dirty. And we also know when we have a, a cut somewhere in our body, cleanliness is very important for the healing. So it is in building this temple that requires cleanliness, holiness. Ephesians 5 verse 26, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. Later in the same chapter, Paul writes that that is a mystery. The church is a mystery. Let's back up a little and look at the scripture of the building. We all are, are we all living stones? We are, look at us as living stones. Are we all, all alike? Are we all equal? Do we all have the same responsibilities? All those living stones, do they all have the same responsibilities? <clears throat> to me, it is a mystery what Jesus meant when he said he gave Peter the keys of the kingdom of heaven. But when I look at the different disciples, it seems to me that Peter was <clears throat> a born leader. He was oftentimes ready to say something or do something before the others were ready. It seemed like Jesus required more of him as well. <coughs> so are we sometime too much like looking at the other where he should do, he should do the same thing that I am doing? So looking at the <clears throat> Peter's responsibility in John 21, we read that uh, familiar part where, where Jesus asked Peter if, if he loves him. <clears throat> John 21 verse 15. So when they had died, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? Why did Jesus ask more than these. Why didn't he just ask, do you love me as much as these do? <clears throat> and Peter says, yeah, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He said unto him, feed my lambs. He said to him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? He said unto him, yeah, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He said unto him, Feed my sheep. He said unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time, Lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus said unto him, Feed my sheep. <clears throat> and then uh, then says, 
<clears throat> Jesus further, he says, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, when, when thou wast young, thou girdest thyself and walkest whither thou wouldst, but when thou shalt be old, thou shalt stretch forth thy hands, and another shall gird thee and carry thee whither thou wouldest not. <clears throat> this this spake he, signifying by what death he should glorify God. And when he had spoken this, he said unto him, Follow me. <clears throat> Have you heard that too? He's saying to us, Jesus says that to each one of us, the same as he did to Peter, Follow me. <clears throat> we do not find that Jesus tested any one of the other disciples like he did Peter. So we, we see there there is a difference. But why can we not all be equal? Each one the same responsibilities. Wouldn't that make it much much easier? We would know know better what what to do for us. <clears throat> so it is has to be in the building of a temple. Uh, we know when a few people work together, there is a leader. So that, that's what, what, uh, what happens, if, if we want it or not. If we, if we see that when there is a group of people working together, <clears throat> sooner or later there will be one leader with, without even uh, pointing them out. There, there will be a leader that, that takes more responsibilities. It is very troublesome <clears throat> when all try to have the same responsibilities. So it, it has to be in the building of the temple, the church. That is why Paul writes in, to Titus in chapter 1 verse 5, For this cause left, for this cause left I thee in Crete, that thou shouldest set in order the things that are wanting, and ordain elders in every city as I had appointed thee. So that's what, uh, what Paul said to Titus. He should go and appoint leaders. To be <clears throat> ordained for that purpose is a very blessed place when we use God's word as our compass. But it seems like there are not very many leaders or elders who can favor everyone, every member in a congregation. There is so easily coming some dirt in between and it does not grow together. A leader who pleases everyone has trouble sooner or later. A leader who pleases everyone will have trouble sooner or later. Is that a reason why we see so many splits among churches today? <clears throat> a saying I came by if you left the church to get away from hypocritical people, you should also quit your job, drop out of school, disconnect yourself from all your friends and family, lock yourself in your room while you are at it. There will be flaws wherever there are humans. We know that where, where there where are humans, there are flaws as well. It's, it's not all all uh, clean and holy just like that. We need to start seeing church for what it is. A hospital with wounded and hurt people. You will find messed up, conniving, calculating, imperfect individuals, including yourself. As much as you want to deny it, we all go for healing. 
no one is without need of, of healing. So we are all on the need of healing. So if you felt betrayed by a fellow church member, put your nursing cap on and think of them as your patients. That will, if we do that, miracles will happen. If, so if you felt betrayed by a fellow church member, put your nursing cap on and think of them as your patients. Treat them with care, love, and kindness, despite their rudeness. Can we see that Battle Mennonite Church would profit from a revival? 1 Corinthians 12, verse 12. <clears throat> For as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of that one body being many are one body, so also is Christ. Then verse 27. Now ye are the body of Christ and members in particular. And God hath set some in the church, first apostles, secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers, after that miracles, then gifts of healings, helps, governments, diversities, and tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Are all workers of miracles? Have all the gifts of healing? <clears throat> Do you all speak with tongues? Do you all interpret? but covet earnestly to the best gifts, and yet shew I unto you a more excellent way. Here we see again that, that is not, we are not required to have all the same, the same gifts, all the different gifts that we have in the church makes it so beautiful, that makes it wonderful. <coughs> so what would... Uh, what would life be if we were all equal? <clears throat> as I thought of that, I, a picture came in my mind of a puzzle with all pieces in the same shape and the same color. Have you thought about putting together a puzzle? All the same, same shapes, every piece in the same color. How long would you, you do that with, with interest? putting together a puzzle. <clears throat> then for the closing, 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 11 to 16. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as also ye do. And we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you, and to esteem them very highly and love for their work's sake, and be at peace among yourselves. Now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are <clears throat> unruly, comfort and the feeble-minded, support the weak, be patient toward all men. See that none render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men. Rejoice <clears throat> evermore. So we see again and again that how important the cleanliness is in, in the church. So back to uh, Jude 1, verse 24 and 25. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceedingly joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. Amen. Let's bow for a prayer. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are our Father. We thank you for the perfect plan that you have for us, that you came up with the, the plan for the church. It is so wonderful if we uh, look into that, 
how we can serve each other in different ways and uh, and it's so important that that we are lively stones i pray that you would uh, work that in us that we we are as as a hospital as the church is as a hospital serving others i bless i pray our blessings on your word in jesus name amen <laughs>